Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name is Cam Williams, and it's time for the weekly ranking show where we go through all the rankings from the WTA and the ATP. And we've got some changes in both the men and the women's rankings. Of course, the WTA finals are starting next week, so those rankings are already set. The ATP finals are now officially set as well. Let's start with the past results because we had a couple of tournaments last week. So starting with the Billie Jean King Cup, the first time it's been played in a couple of years, and it was Team Russia beating Switzerland 2-0 in the final. Team Russia had a really, really good team, and Switzerland did as well, but Russia was just way too strong. And then on the ATP, we had the Paris Masters with Djokovic getting the revenge win over Medvedev in three tight sets, 4-6, 6-3, 6-3, to lift his sixth Paris trophy and just sort of restore order to the rankings and show that the world number one is not going anywhere yet. All right, let's go check out the WTA rankings for this week because we had a couple of changes down the bottom of the rankings. No change at the top though. Barty, she stays at number one. Zabalenka at two. Krejcikova at three. Pliskova at four. Muguruza at five. Sakari at six. Jabor at seven. Contivate at eight. But Angie Kerber, she drops down eight spots out of the top 10, making way for Sviantec who goes up one spot. And Badosa, getting into the top 10 for the first time, and she's just about to play the WTA Finals as well. So she could go further up the rankings with a good week in Mexico next week, but she's officially a top 10 player. She goes up to number 10. Taking a look at the players that have gone up in the rankings this week, even though we didn't have any tournaments on the WTA, Raducanu, she is at a career high number 20 in the world. She goes up one spot higher than last week. And Fernandez, she's gone up two spots Thanks to a few players dropping down the ranks, she goes up to number 24 in the world, which is a career high for her. So the US Open finalists, both getting to career high rankings this week, despite not playing any tennis. The players that have gone down to the rankings this week, we have Bencic. She's gone down six spots to number 23 in the world after losing all her points from the WTA finals two years ago. And Andrescu is the exact same thing. She drops down 22 spots, down to 46 in the world after losing all the points from her WTA finals from a couple of years ago. So. Two players that had a really good WTA finals in 2019 are both dropping down the rankings. Let's go check out the ATP rankings this week. We have a few changes in the top 10 with Djokovic. He stays at number one, and he's looking like he's going to stay there for a couple of months yet because increase the gap on Medvedev. Medvedev stays at number two, though. But we have a change in the middle here with Zverev going back up to number three, which is his career-high ranking, overtaking Tsitsipas after a very good week in Paris last week from Zverev. Tsitsipas goes down to number four after a poor week in Paris. And Rafa Nadal, he drops down to number six in the world allowing Rublev to go up to number five. Even though Rublev didn't play well in Paris, Nadal dropped a lot of points from a good performance over the last couple of years, which he had a lot of points to defend. And because he's not playing, he drops all those points. So Rafa down at number six, Rublev goes up to number five again. Berrettini stays at seven, Rud stays at eight, and a change down the bottom with Sinner dropping down to number 10, and Hubi Hercac going up to number nine, which is a career high for him after making the semifinals of Paris last week. So some big changes in the middle and at the bottom of the rankings. Let's go check out the race to Turin, the race to the ATP finals, and it's now set. We've got Djokovic at number one, Medvedev stays at number two, but Zverev, after a really good week in Paris, he goes up one more spot to number three, pushing City past down to number four. Rublev stays at five, Berrettini at six, but Hubi Hercac, he goes up two spots, taking the number seven spot, pushing down Rud, who already qualified during the week, to number eight, and Sinner, he gets kicked out of the top eight. He will be the first alternate going into Turin, so if someone was to be injured in the top eight, he would take their spot, but unfortunately, after a poor week in Paris last week, and because Hercatch made the semi-finals, Sinner is now out of the ATP finals, and Norrie, he stays at number 10, and he'll be the second alternate, so if two players in the top eight get injured, Norrie will also be able to play in the ATP finals, and there might be a chance that we see one of these two guys because Tsitsipas is coming in with a bit of an injury. So maybe Sinner gets a chance to play one match at the ATP Finals in a couple of weeks. All right, having a look at the players that have gone up in the rankings this week. And we've got Duckworth, who made the quarterfinals of Paris. He's gone up eight spots to number 47 in the world, which is a career-high ranking for him after a couple of good weeks on the Tour, on the Challenger Tour, and on the smaller tournaments. And now with Paris getting to the quarterfinals, he's getting a career-high ranking. And Gaston. He's gone up 36 spots to number 67 in the world, which is a career high ranking for him. Again, making the quarterfinals of Paris as a qualifier. So a couple of quarterfinalists in Paris getting career high rankings for their hard work last week. Having a look at the players that have gone down in the rankings, and it's Umber. He's gone down six spots to number 35 in the world. He's been injured the last few months, so 
He's losing a lot of points from a couple of years ago, unfortunately due to injury. And Milos Raonic, he's gone down 23 spots to number 71 in the world after losing all his points from Paris from last year. So he's dropping down in the rankings, and so is Umber for not playing him. And both of those players are injured, so we're not going to see them until maybe the Australian Open next year. And they're going to have to regain those points again, starting from scratch at the Australian Open. So there we have it. The ATP Finals are set. Of course, the WTA Finals are starting this week, so we'll talk about that in another video doing a preview for that. But the ATP Finals, they're officially set with Hercatch and Rudd getting the final two spots. But let me know down in the comments below, who's going to win the ATP Finals? Now that we've got it set, Djokovic obviously in good form after Paris. Medvedev, he is actually doing pretty well as well considering he is the defending champion as well. Or do you think some of the other players are going to do well? Maybe Berrettini, maybe Zverev, maybe Hercatch. Someone else might be able to get it because over the last couple of years, we have had random champions winning that event at the ATP Finals. So let me know down in the comments below, who do you think is going to do well at the ATP Finals and who's going to win? So the ATP Finals are set. WTA Finals start in a couple of days.